Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here once again with some more geography. Now, we're on a Madagascar. I don't think it goes without saying. Uh, I don't know nothing except for you guys had a movie named about you guys. So, and Madag I mean, I haven't seen it. I, think, I have seen it. It's just been so forever, forever ago, and uh, I'm trying to remember if I'm thinking about the correct movie. Madagascar is an island, right? Yes, <laughs> I'm going to find out. Uh, Madagascar is an island. I'm assuming they got a bunch of animals on it, right? Wait, or is, no, because is that the one where the animals broke out of the zoo and then they land on Mac? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I'll just say I have no idea about Madagascar, except for it has a really cool name uh, and it has a movie named after it. That's about all I know. <laughs> so uh yeah let's jump into it guys i really don't know what else to say except for please hit the like and subscribe button below please and thank you uh yeah so uh, i don't know <laughs> i'm just thinking on with the video guys i try to think of, about stuff to say before every video but especially when it comes to like the geography now videos there's really not much i can say because i don't know i don't know anything so i can't really say much uh, I'm doing every country in the world, if you're new here, and so, if, in alphabetical order, so, anything, uh, before the M's, uh, I've already done, and then, uh, if you're a country that's way down the alphabet, I'm sorry, <laughs> but, uh, anyways, guys, we're gonna have a lot of fun here, I hope, I hope you guys, I know you guys are gonna bring me a lot of cool, interesting stuff, right, Madagascar, all right. Three, two, one, bam. Hey everybody, so you know what today- Oh, that's for the terrible puns from last episode. Yeah. And that is for Bob Saget! Bob Saget! Bob Saget! Oh. Oh. Anyway! Saget. Okay. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. Most people only know one thing about Madagascar, lemurs. But if you dig deep, you'll discover a country with one of the most unique demographical anomalies on the planet, the- no, I knew about a movie. Yeah, I remember being you know, a lemur in that, in that uh, movie, right? I'm sorry. You guys are probably, like, hating me right now for bringing up the movie. <laughs> Anyways. But if you dig deep, you'll discover a country with one of the most unique demographical anomalies on the planet. The people. The people here are, like, the real treasure. Oh, so you're saying lemurs aren't as important as humans? That's speciesist! Oh, my. Native geography Lalina wrote a cool quote in an email saying, Madagascar is shaped like the left footprint of the gods. And when you observe this nation, you'll definitely see the divine residue. First of all, Madagascar right. is an island nation and the fourth largest island in the right. world located just off the coast of Eastern Africa near Mozambique. The country is divided into 22 regions with the capital Antananarivo, sometimes called Tana for short, located in the Anlamaga region near the center of the country. After the capital, the largest cities are Tuamastina in the east coast and Antirabe in the center. Although the country has about 70 domestic airports and airstrips, mostly for transport transporting supplies to the outskirt villages, the largest and only international airport is Ivato International in Antananarivo. Transport in Madagascar is quite good as the six, four, and seven highways connect the country north to south. Unfortunately, only about 10% of their roadways are paved and many are affected Damn. by rain and cyclones. It can take about six hours just to drive 60 miles simply because the road work. Otherwise, with a coastline of over 3,000 miles, they are loaded with harbors and ports for shipping. The largest one, of course, being Tomasina, where most of the imports come in from the east. It also transports about 75 percent of their imports and exports. Wasn't there also like that Libertalia thing where the pirates came in to hide out and made like this weird utopian society in the 1600s? That's why I hired you as my research assistant. Say hi to Kai. He's the new researcher. Cool. Is there a movie about this island? Because, you know, I've seen uh, Black Sails, which is a really awesome TV series. Uh, you know, and just that time period seems like a very interesting time period. So, yeah, let me know if there's any kind of like TV series based on this because, you know, pirates are cool. Anyways, and the paved road, ten percent. Woo! But I guess everyone's got like four wheel drive around there. I'm assuming. Eighteen hundreds. That's why I hired you as my research assistant. Say hi to Kai. He's the new research guy. The country has only two main railways: one mostly for cargo between Tuamasina and Antananarivo, and the southern route, the Fian Aransoa Mancara line, which carries passengers between the two towns that are not accessible by road. Sorry if this okay. stuff seems kind of really boring and technical. It's just I like showing the inner workings of a country's infrastructure and how it operates. It's like it's like opening up a pocket watch and explaining how all the gears and buttons make the whole thing it's function. Cool, dude. Pocket watch? What are you, ninety years old? When I look at you, Gen Z kids, sometimes. 
sometimes I question if I actually am. The country has dozens of smaller islands and islets around the coast, mostly on the west side, places like Nosy Bay, the largest and busiest resort in the country. Wasn't there a crazy news story about that place in which an angry mob went up to some French tourists and- Yeah, 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 but we gotta keep this channel monetized. Otherwise, just like we mentioned in the Comoros episode, they have a few disputes over ownership of certain islands in the region. All these islands- Angry mob went up to a French tourist? Nega got me interested. Maybe someone, anyone from Madagascar, let me know in the comments below. <laughs> We mentioned in the Comoros episode, they have a few disputes over ownership of certain islands in the region. All these islands, though, are administered by France. Otherwise, some top notable sites of interest might include places like Pirate Cemetery of Saint Marie, the Ambohimanga Gate, the Monument Aux Morts, the Croc Farm, the Rova Antananarivo, Fort Mana, Ansirabe Cathedral, the Windsor Castle of Madagascar, Independence Avenue, the Botanical Gardens of Simbazaza, whale watching at Ifati Village. The Windsor Castle, just that you know that that uh, that tower, but like. You know, people always think of castles as these giant, huge things, but they're, they're, you know, not all castles are like that. Just those are pretty much just the famous ones, right? Because I've done uh, a video reaction video on how castles are made, or something, something like that from Epic History, and uh, you know, you, you know, you can have just a small castle. You know, you're just trying to bring, you know, you're just trying to protect, you know, the, you know, if that's all you can afford and whatever. You, you guys, guess you guys can watch that, but. Definitely interesting castle. I don't care how big or small. Cool stuff. Rova Antananarivo, Fort Mana, Ansirabe Cathedral, the Windsor Castle of Madagascar, Independence Avenue, the Botanical Gardens of Simbazaza, whale watching at Ifati Village, the Savika Bullfighting Ring, what? and the Gemstone Marketplace of Ilakaka. All right, that was fun. And just like Bob Sackett's career, it's time to move on to weird. Bullfighting Ring. That's got to be dangerous, right? And like tourists jump in there. I'm sure they probably love tourists in there, right? Uh, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. I definitely wouldn't do it, but we're got to have to be like kind of like a professional to get up up in there, you know? Because that seems like some pretty deadly, you know? If you if you don't know what you're doing. Weirder in stranger territories. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm still keeping the gag running. <laughs> oh, good for you, Paul. That's amazing. Ken, I swear. <laughs> In Madagascar, it's like grandma's kitchen. Everything is homemade with an original recipe. And this. First of all, Madagascar is made up of four main landscape zones, the wetter east coast, the drier savanna west coast, the really dry southwest coast, and the central highlands known as the Tsaratanana Massif, where you can find the tallest peak, Maramokotro, further up north. It even snows on the peak yeah. sometimes. These mountains also provide the source of all the major rivers, including the longest, the Mangoki. However, the Ikopa is probably the most important one as it flows through Antananarivo, known for its distinct red color caused by river sediments. Not too far off, you can find Lake Alautra, the largest lake in the country. All right, now that that's out of the way, if you've watched any kind of documentary or show or incredibly accurate cartoon depiction of Madagascar, I'm sure you're fully aware of how unique and distinct the country is when it comes to nature. Due to the geographic isolation, somewhere around 80 to 90% of the flora and fauna can only be found here and nowhere else. Not only that, but even though Madagascar is only like the 48th largest country in land area, it makes up about 5% of the world's entire known biodiversity. Some have even gone so far as to lay what the eighth continent yo check out the new kid hey you can sit here with us cool thanks w w what's your stories well uh i have the most mammals and i got the most birds and i have the most diverse species in general cool yeah well uh i got spiky rodents owls with ears hissing cockroaches red frogs leaf geckos and crackhead monkey things with one long finger <laughs> this guy is freaky I like it. Yeah, they got some interesting stuff going that on. On freaky. top of that, we cannot make an episode on Madagascar without talking about the most iconic national animal in the island, the lemur, which comes in over 100 different species, my favorite being the ringtail. On top of that, Madagascar's land in itself is pocketed with outstanding wonders like the Singi de Bemahara stone forest made what? out of needle-shaped eroded limestone cliffs, the avenue of the baobabs with incredibly thick trees only found here. Whoa! Madagascar is also the- I'm sorry, that- the what is that forest called? That is amazing. That is so cool. That'd be cool just to go on a hike through there, man. Take a bunch of cool photos. Man, cool stuff, man. Like you don't even have a lot of these places, like you don't need anything built there just to be cool. I mean, you can just have like cool formations and nature and that's just cool in itself. Anyways. And those trees, man. Singi de Bemahara Stone Forest, made out of needle-shaped eroded limestone cliffs, the avenue of the Beaba. That is cool. So those are actually, like, they grow like that. That's awesome, man. That'd be hard to make a treehouse in that. That'd be perfect, right? Get yourself some, uh, some steps. 
Tropics with incredibly thick trees only found here. Whoa! Madagascar is also the largest producer of vanilla in the world, providing around 60 to 75 percent of the world's supply. Wow. Thank you, Madagascar. Minerals and sapphires are mined a lot here. You'll find the distinct zebu cattle all over, known for their fatty shoulder humps. They provide great meat and milk. Which brings us to food. Some of the top notable dishes of the country might include things like ravin bomanga, patsamena, kakapizon, akoho si voanio, sesika, and the national dish ramazan. Now keep in mind, just like we studied in the Lao episode, a lot of these dishes might include a touch of leftover French influence and baguettes are everywhere. In fact, French is an official language. What? Yeah, we'll explain that in... Now, if you thought the landscape and animals were interesting, wait till you hear about the backstory behind the people of Madagascar. That's where the story gets real good. A person from Madagascar is called Malagasy, not Madagascan, not Madagascarian, <laughs> not Elon Musk, who is mad at a gas car, Ian. Yeah, that joke, what? Malagasy. Got it? First of all, the country is made up of about 25 million people and has the westernmost Austronesian people group in the world. About 95% of the country identifies under the broader Malagasy title, which is subdivided into about 20 different ethnic groups, the largest being the Marina, the Betsimi Sakara, and the Betsileo. The remaining percent is made up of other groups, mostly Europeans in French origin, East Africans, Chinese, and Indians. They use the Malagasy Ariari as their currency. They use the types C, D, E, J, and K outlets, which can all pretty much accommodate the same two-pronged form format most Europeans use. That type E though is weird because it has like a socket that has its own prong that goes into the plug and they drive on the right side of the road. Now what exactly is a Malagasy person? You would th I always find the plugs very weird because they're always different than ours and so it's just crazy. You know, I don't know. Obviously you live there it's normal and like ones here would be crazy to you but it's very interesting that like if you go someplace you, you got to bring an adapter you know you like buy an adapter ahead of time like research some of that stuff so you're not going to your hotel like uh can't charge my phone what do i do <laughs> anyways to the plug and they drive on the right side of the road now what exactly is a malagasy person you would think well they're in africa so they're just africans right you know black done but eh, hold on there's a little more to that there's a twist and it has to do with austronesians <gasps> yo ken <sighs> yeah yeah i'm gonna get a triple shot of espresso you're like half filipino these guys are technically like your cousins you explain this part uh are you sure yeah don't question my tactics in running this show just do it i mean doesn't noah usually do that do it or i'm fired right can, 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 do it, can, or you're fired. Can I swear? Madagascar is actually a relatively newly inhabited island. Although evidence of human foraging goes back to about 2000 BC, the earliest settlements occurred only about 380, and they were actually by Austronesian people from the Southeast Asian islands. Over time, Bantu people moved across the Mozambique Channel and mixed in with Austronesian settlers, creating a whole new race known as the Malagasy. This means hmm. that the average Malagasy person, to a varying degree, has a genetic haploid structure derived from both Sub-Saharan African and Southeast Asian people. This is why Malagasy people look different from mainland Africans and can come with a variety of skin tones. Sometimes when meeting the locals, huh. you might feel like you're more in a Polynesian or Southeast Asian country rather than Africa. Whew, was that good? Can you dye your hair green? Can I swear? Anyway, the Malagasy language is one key factor that sets Madagascar apart too, as it's related to other languages in the Nusantara region of Southeast Asia. Side note, that word I just said, Nusantara, is the term used for the entire archipelago of islands in Southeast Asia. And the craziest thing is, the closest language to Malagasy is actually the Ma'ayan language spoken in Borneo, not a native African one. You can find other similar words in other Austronesian languages, like the word for island, Nosi, versus Javanese, Nusa, or Malay-related words like Rihanna versus Rihanna. On top of that, as a former French colony, French is an official language, mostly spoken by the government and educated officials, although only about a quarter of the population are fluent. Oh, okay. Still, you see French signs everywhere. Culture-wise, as mentioned, there are 18 tribes, each with their own distinct customs. For example, the Betsileo are known for their Famadi Hana dead celebrations and Zebu rodeos. The Betsimi Sakara are known for being like the best fishers. The Sakalava are the non-Malagasy Bantu-derived tribe, and they have their trance ceremonies that talk to their ancestors. The Antandroi are like the ones that live near the spiny forest and are famous for their drums, spears, and flutes. The Bara are famous for their cattle herding and hair braids. The Antifasi are the desert, sand people, and so on. About half of the country is Christian, whereas the other half adhere to indigenous folk religions, sometimes synchronized with Christianity, making Madagascar one of the highest percentages of populations that practice traditional beliefs. Speaking of which, it's time to talk about history. In the quickest way I can put it, foragers come in, but maybe die out or disappear. Austronesians sail in, then the Bantus come in, then the Arabs, the Portuguese, 
many small kingdoms. This dude decided to unify it. English and French missionaries, deportation of the queen, colonization of the island in 1896, independence 1960, 1972 university strike that resulted in the end of the first republic. This guy becomes president and kind of stays that way. Protests, modern era, and here we are today. Some notable people of Malagasy descent or who came from Madagascar might include John Joseph Raberavello, De Gary, these soccer players, Raymond Rangeva, <laughs> Samuela, Nini Donaya, Olombolona Ricky, Viavicila, Nirina Zubir, Albert Kwan, Lego, Mahaleo, this former president, Michelle Rakostun, Lolo Sini Tarini, and these traditional singers. All right, time to move on to the last segment. <laughs> Now, being a country that was raised from distant settlers mixing in, Madagascar has always kind of understood what diplomacy was all about. As a member of La Francophonie, they get along pretty well with other French-speaking countries, including their smaller island neighbors, Comoros, Mauritius, and the overseas territories of Mayotte and Reunion. Canada has been a huge investor, though, for decades, especially in mineral mining. As a part of the SADC, they get along with South Africa and other nations in the area, especially for trade and business. Many people even have family members in Mozambique. China today is the largest trade partner, though, with sales reaching about 765 million. Historically, relations with the USA go back to the 19th century and were relatively close, except for that one period in time during the 70s when they closed ties because they favored the USSR, but relations picked up back again in the 90s. However, a lot of Malagasy people I've talked to have said France would probably be their best friend. Yes, there Aww. were the colonial years, but their history and interaction is so closely intertwined with a relationship that is better than ever today. France is the second largest trade and business provider. They're the largest export receiver as well as foreign aid donator. They provide the largest number of European tourists, and overall, the two countries are very strongly linked. In conclusion, there is no place like Madagascar with things in it found nowhere else. With a unique people and makeup, it's no wonder why they call themselves the eighth continent. Stay tuned, Malawi is coming up next. Yeah, that's really cool. They got like people from everywhere over there, you know? And kind of basically created their own like race and people, you know? So that, that's really, really interesting, you know? So, and like you said, like a place like nowhere, nowhere else, which is, you know, if you live there, it's got to be pretty awesome because it kind of makes you stand out and, you know, you don't just blend in with the rest of them, you know, so that's really cool. You know, the different tribes, like, very different, like, like a, you know, definitely a big mix there. And then the landscape is very awesome. So I can definitely see why a lot of people would want to come visit there. They seem like a you know, really interesting country. Uh, let me guys, let me, guys let, me, yeah, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And comment below if you're from there or been there and you know and what your experiences were in there that'd be that'd be, that'd be really cool to, to hear about but anyways guys hit that like and subscribe if you haven't yet i uh, hope you guys continue the journey with me and yeah on to the next country which is uh i i, I, don't, I don't know we'll find out we'll find out tomorrow right <laughs> anyways like and subscribe catch you guys in future videos you guys are awesome talk to your friends tomorrow uh yeah i think that's about it